You're tuning in to 91.9 KCSB FM in Santa Barbara, online at kcsb.org. This week's artist is Rain here at In the Spotlight, the show that brings you unknown underground music and puts it in the spotlight. I'm Ryan Chabetta, and our engineer and editor is Quill Say. I have an apology I need to make to you, because I was underestimating all that you could do. We can't know what you've got or what's coming next. I just can't wait to see you get into your eight like Mac. And I admit I got a little caught up because after all, you didn't disappoint me that much. My talent is a credit to the team. Like a laser beam, we fire at the sun. My talent is a credit to the team. You're not a me when all is said and done. In your redemption arc is coming up. I made a mistake. I've downplayed your credentials. I did not realize all of my times it's put potential. But we can leave what's in the past as antecedent. Cause I can't put your vibes down when they are most excellent. Got a little caught up Cause after all You didn't disappoint me that much Mike Townsend is a credit to the team He needs a theme that goes like na 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 Mike Townsend is a credit to the team Man of our dreams, you know he's gonna save us all Get your redemption, our game's coming up was Mike Townsend is a credit to the team by Rain. Before that, you heard My Name is Mike by PJ Cotter, both artists from the Seattle Garages. We have Rain here now for an interview. Well, now is in September 23rd online. Uh, any, any deep thoughts that you want to share about this or our upcoming tracks about the lesser known players, Artur Huerta and Henry Marshmallow? Um... Yeah, let's talk about Arturo Huerta. Um, yeah, we and really Henry went off about Mike last time, so. Yeah, I, I think this is um, uh, an important little track. Uh, people love this track so much. I love this track um, so much. Um, Ethan, um, who we've heard from before uh, on Park It. Yeah, he had the monologue. Yeah, but only Mike makes tracks that are like seven minutes long, um, <laughs> just like real prog opuses um, about these players, um, and does such a good job at like channeling like personalities and um, giving these characters like voices and flavors and like real characters, um, and I think like. Arturo and Henry are two players that like hadn't and maybe still don't get a lot of like screen time um, but um, I think this this track is great in, in showing what those those characters are about yeah. um, all I knew about these characters before the song was just that Henry Marshmallow had a fun name 
Yeah, and also, uh, and this is a bit embarrassing, uh, Henry's name is actually Henry Marshallo. Oh. Uh, there, there is no uh, second M <laughs> in Henry's name. Shoot, I didn't even have that bit right. Uh, but we have we have made that typo and we have stuck with that typo for a month now, uh, <laughs> which is forever in terms of placeball. Um, so um, I, I can't say whether Ethan did that deliberately or whether Ethan made the exact same mistake that I think every single person upon reading Henry's name made, which is like that word is the word marshmallow. Um, I mean, it's placeball. Regardless, it's fun names. Regardless, Henry Marsh. Henry Marshallo is a marshmallow. That is that is canonical and true, um, which uh, is adorable. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that. All right, let's let's take a listen to Arturo Huerta and Henry Marshallo slash Marshmallo <laughs> by Ethan Geller, featuring Genface. Cino garages. <laughs> Let's 
Bushmell of the world's greatest pitcher in all of baseball. It's Henry Bushmell of the world's greatest pitcher in all of baseball. Thank you, thank you. Three, four. Thank you, thank you again, thank you. Thanks to my backing band, the Mini Marshmallows. Ha <laughs> ha, they're unionized now, I hate it. No, you're, you're You might not know me, union. but my name is Henry Marshmallow, pitcher for the Seattle Garages, established baritone, aspiring tenor, but most of all, I'm an incredible athlete. And I always have been, though I have to tell you, I used to be made fun of all the time for my marshmallow condition. I'm a marshmallow, in case you didn't know. Actually, in the minor leagues, I get heckled from the stands like, Hey, marshmallow man, we're gonna roast you. We're gonna make you into a small. And eventually I had it up to here and yelled back, You know what, dude? I dare you. If you tried to make me into a s'more and eat me, your body would need to be like 20% insulin. So you can try and make me a s'more, but I'm gonna like wreck your pancreas if you do. So that made me pretty quiet. Oh. Just a second, my publicist wants to talk. You really can't talk about diabetes. Okay, great okay. news. I've decided to apologize for the previous anecdote. And I'm going to be making a large donation to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Shout out to everyone with type 1 diabetes. Nick Jonas, Ethan Geller, Justice Sonia Sotomayor. All champions in my opinion. Who's Ethan Geller? Okay, I have one more thing to say, actually. If it was me, at the end of Ghostbusters, instead of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, I would have won. Bill Murray would be like, Oh man, we were gonna Ghostbust you, but you're like, really chill. Do you want to make more movies with me? Then I would have been a movie star. Maybe even become president. Then Ronald Reagan would only have one term. Iran Contra wouldn't have happened. I would defund the CIA. The entire geopolitical landscape would be. Henry, Henry, we, we gotta stop. Okay, we really gotta stop my publicist is now telling me I really need to stop talking. Thank you all. I'm Henry Marshmallow. Good night and go garages. Park it. <laughs> yeah, how was that? Good, good job. We're, we're, we're late for your appointment. That was Arturo Huerta and Henry Marshmallow, or Marshmallow, or Marshmallow. Uh, the, the song's called Marshmallow. Uh, it's very complicated. <laughs> the song's written by Ethan Geller, featuring Gentface, off of the band Seattle Garages. And is this the Redemption Arc, the album? Uh, Redemption Arc is the album. Our, from the third album in the Garages discography, Redemption Arc. Now, I know we're talking about how Henry Marshallo is a marshmallow uh, before we played this song. Is there anything you want to say about the non-human baseball players in general? Um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them. Um, the garages have managed to um, somehow have ended up with the most human um, players or humanoid even. Um, with the vocaloid, yeah, Luis is a, a vocaloid, but still like a they're a, they're a human, <laughs> a human vocaloid uh, shape. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of it is determined by like fan artists and who's like in and around each of the team's communities. Um, and we just happen to have a lot of fan artists in and around the garages. Who just drew a lot of hot people um, uh, and they are all hot is is what I've been told um, so saith the the bisexuals in the room every time pictures of them get posted um, including uh, Henry Marshallo who is again a marshmallow um, uh, but is he uh, literally he, hot like toasted I don't know if I've seen that kind of art uh, to be honest with you, um, but I'm sure. Uh, feel free to search that at your own leisure. Um, <laughs> take take parental caution. Um, I, I I do not believe that exists. To be clear, I, I hope um, not. 
All, all of the fan art has been... You're tuning in to 91.9 KCSB FM in Santa Barbara. Online at KCSB. Yeah, the garages have just ended up with like a weirdly high proportion of humans. Um, but the uh, the other teams have ended up with uh, quite a number of non, non-human non players. Uh, including uh, one of the most recent additions to the, the Tacos. Uh, they have picked up Pitching Machine. Um... <laughs> And I'm not sure on the word from the community as to whether that is a literal pitching machine or some other sort of humanoid robot called pitching machine or maybe just a person called pitching machine. I I think the jury's still out on that one. I've seen a lot of both. Yeah. Um, But uh, I personally love pitching machine as a character. I think uh, it's very funny. Um... The reason, of course, that the Tacos have picked up Pitching Machine is, uh, as, as you mentioned earlier, um, we're at a point where some of the players are getting trapped in giant peanut shells, which reduces their ability to play the sport baseball. Um, as you'd so, expect. As you would expect. And so the Tacos made a deliberate and intentional effort to gather the entire baseball community around getting all of their pitchers trapped inside these giant peanut shells so that they could not pitch. Hashtag Snackrifice. Hashtag Snackrifice, which was a complete success. Uh, they got all of their pitchers stuck inside giant peanut shells. Um, and as a, as a reward, uh, <laughs> with three question marks, um, they've been granted a new player, a pitching machine who has been pitching 100% of their games this season and has been doing a incredible job. Uh, they are a pitching machine, uh, both <laughs> in name and in function, and maybe also in the object they are, but it's complicated. It's making people lots of money, too, because everybody's idolizing pitching machine, which is another thing you can do in this game. You can idolize players. And that's mostly how they get trapped in the peanut shells. Yeah, it's it's both the method by which you can personally get paid for how well one particular player is doing, but it's also a method by which they get trapped inside a giant peanut shell and cannot play the sport anymore. Uh, so it is sort of a prisoner's dilemma situation, where if everybody idolizes a particular player, they will get trapped inside a giant peanut shell, and then nobody wins. Um, unless you've deliberately done it. Um, but you really have to lean into that choice, I think. Um, and and that was sports talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're just tuning in, if you're just tuning in, we were actually talking about something which which can be described as a sport. I know this isn't a sports sports show. This is a music show, but you know we branch out every once in a while. Yeah, you gotta you gotta spread <laughs> spread out a little bit. Max Kelton's still our sports director. We're, getting, we're taking his job right now. <laughs> um, should we talk about the next song then? <laughs> yeah, you know that that's probably a smart idea. Um, you know, we 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 might be getting some feedback for wow. for moving more towards the music with our next with our next broadcast how, how often do you get complimented complimented on your your segue abilities because they are second to none oh, i appreciate it thank you um yeah so this is what album are we up to this is the fourth one um in the feedback what's uh what is feedback mr mr rain um, what is that in the context of baseball Oh, um, I, I'm, I'm not a mister. Uh, just... Oh, so sorry, sorry. Oh, you're all good. Um, but, uh, yeah, feedback That's is... Okay. I apologize. That's all right. Um, so feedback is a mechanic by which uh, players get swapped between teams. So if you play while the weather is doing feedback... Um, that one of your players can get swapped randomly with one of the players on the opposing team. Um, And whenever that mechanic 
appeared. Uh, my eyes lit up because I was like, what a, what a horrifying thing to happen. Because um, obviously, you know, mechanically on on the site, there there isn't a, you know, there's no graphics. There's not like an indication as to what is happening there. It's just like these two players swapped in the feedback. Um, That's all they tell so I was you. like, how do I capture that in a song? Uh, to which the only possible answer is a, you know, mid 2000s era emo banger about, you know, reaching your arm out across the field and being like, I'll not let you go. And the other person reaching back, but your fingertips just barely miss. Uh, whatever song would be playing over that scene in the anime intro, uh, that is the song that I wanted to write about this particular mechanic. Um, and so that is in the feedback, open brackets, day, close brackets. Why does it have a subtitle, day, anyway? Um, because uh, this album uh, starts with in the feedback, day, which is uh, this track you're about to hear, um, and then ends with in the feedback, night, uh, which uh, Mucus Queen um, uh, helpfully dropped in to do a little... Uh, quiet ukulele cover of it um so you get the (laughs) you get the big emo guitar screaming at the top of the album and then you get the the quiet wistful uh reprise at the end um and i i think it's great Um, this is what i get for listening on spotify you gotta go to Bandcamp for for the full discography yeah. If you want to hear these tracks again after you hear them now. Absolutely. Uh, the garages dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, all right. This is in the feedback day. The the big emotion song to mark our this is like this is about halfway through the the playlist. This is like our uh, act one finale. Yeah, by I'd, Rain. I'd I'd say that, yeah. By Rain and Xanterbird. Let's hear it. I can see the truth in your eyes As you're telling me lies Like you know that you'll hold my hand again Cause you don't know you will But I know how you feel And I don't know if I can watch you walk out on the field And there's a lightning strike the pitch black night I want to hold you close but I can't I don't want to let you go in the feedback cause I don't know I'll get you back I don't know I'll get you back and I don't want to let you go in the feedback cause I don't know I'll get Judy calls you say And then it's all of the eyes on the picture throwing And it's all of the eyes on the way it's going And you hit the ball And then it's out of our
That was In the Feedback by Rain and Xanterbird. Uh, I know you wanted to give Xanterbird their credit for this song. Uh, what was their contribution and uh, for In the Feedback, the song we just heard? Um, so Xanter um, is uh, someone who has been uh, consistently contributing um, what I would define as uh, emo bangers, just absolute uh, out of the park emo hits uh, the whole time. Um, and I was having real trouble with my guitar that week. Um, my guitar is in pretty bad shape at the moment. It is missing a string. It is missing some tuning pegs. It's fine. That's just the situation we're in. Um, so I was like, I cannot get these cool power chords that I need. Uh, please, please enter. Come save me. And I, I got these two, two perfect uh, double tracked guitar lines in my inbox like the next day. Um, Heck yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, that's what this song, the song's supposed to sound like. Mm, perfect. Uh, really brought it all together. Um, so yeah, absolutely uh, incredible turnaround time from, from everyone on the team. Um, but uh, particularly um, shout out to Santa Bird for um, saving my butt <laughs> on getting that track out. Um but um, yeah, um, the next couple of tracks, um, um, I I also got in my inbox, um, but they are from new collaborators uh, to the garages uh, at this point. Um, so there was like a, a core group of maybe like eight of us um, that have been working on stuff uh, up until in the feedback, and then. Um, I got these messages from new people I hadn't talked to before um, who had just sent these really incredible songs. And I was like, I have, I have no idea where you came from. I don't know like what your musical background is, but like these are so, 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 so good. And they were just like instant additions. It was like, yep, <laughs> consider, consider yourself signed to the band. Well done. Um, I, uh, I, I genuinely love these these next couple of tracks. All right, uh, the 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 new kids on the block, bringing their A game with a face to the name, and number fourteen by Perfected Automation and Riley, respectively. Let's take a listen. You're tuning in to ninety one point nine KCSB FM in Santa Barbara, online at kcsb.org. This week's artist is Rain here at In the Spotlight, the show that brings you unknown underground music and puts it in the spotlight. I'm Ryan Chabetta, and our engineer and editor is Quill Sang. And Dustin Pedroia, or, or Pedroia, I'm, I'm not sure, but he's number 15. He's up right now, and let's see what happens when the person pitching starts off the inning. And that happened. <laughs>
Hope that we'll see them again in this life or another. That was number 14 by Riley. Before that, you heard A Face to the Name by Perfected Automation. Both members of the Seattle Garages, some of the newer entrants into the collective group. Uh, band. Collective, I think, is, is what we're going with for now. All right. Newest entrance to the collective. Uh, I know number 14, that's, that's a very significant number in baseball. What's Absolutely. the, uh, you want to help inform, inform the confused viewer on what the heck is special about 14? So yeah, um, to, to catch up on the, on the story so far, um, in, in Blazeball, um, as, as mentioned, uh, a long time ago now, uh, Jalen Hot Dog Fingers was the, the first to get got, uh, by the incinerations, um, and uh, number 14 is the first uh, hint, I suppose, as to where things are going to go, um, which is that there was a plan brewing um, in which a combination of a few mechanics on the Blaseball website would, in theory, um, allow the Seattle garages to bring back Jalen Hot Dog Fingers from the dead. Necromancy. A little bit of necromancy, um, and to be clear, when people are incinerated, it isn't it isn't quite sure. You know, there, there's no definitive certainty as to what happens after that. Um, so um, we ran the numbers, we did the math, and with the help of uh, all of the other teams in the league, um, um, we were going to enact a plan to bring Jalen Hot Dog Fingers back from the dead. Um, which meant um, putting uh, her at exactly number 14 on the leaderboard of the most idolized players. Um, so lottery, that is, right? that is, yes. And then uh, the blessing uh, lottery pick would let you take the player in the 14th spot and add that player to your team in exchange for one of your own players. Um, and so uh, we were, well, I can't speak for everyone, excuse me, but I would have uh, just been happy uh, getting Jalen back from the dead at all. Uh, it didn't necessarily have to be back on the Seattle garages. Um, I think uh, I would have been happy just knowing that Jalen was was back out of the, the shadow realm, as it were. Um, but, it, uh, well, spoilers for what's to come. Uh, but at this point, uh, the plan was being enacted uh, to put Jalen um, in number 14th uh, place. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what number 14 is about. Um, sort of uh, bringing back the dead as a... Uh, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, a gesture towards the baseball gods that... Uh, we will find a way around their oppressive systems um, and, uh, you know, flaunt their rules um, explicitly into their face. Um, but also, while this is happening, um, while <laughs> while people are... Um, Tempting uh, the making, dark arts. Making plans to do a little bit of casual necromancy um, of their favorite baseball players, um... Other people are getting more invested in the uh, love lives and romantic interests <laughs> of, uh, of the players. And uh, who's dating who? And uh, who's romantically interested in, in which other players? As you mentioned um, before, the Seattle Garages team is composed of very hot people. Exactly. Um, and some of the other teams, believe it or not, uh, also have hot people on them. <laughs> um, uh, so I hear. Um, so there is some uh, romantic interest that people have picked up, uh, like within members of a team, and some that are uh, external to the team. Um, 
So uh, this next couple of tracks are uh, romance songs. Uh, they are they are songs of longing and of love uh, and of hope, um, which I think at this point uh, of talking about uh, incinerations and necromancy uh, is probably just the thing we need. <laughs> let's uh, let's slow down and take it easy with Avila's Cruise by June September and Seagull Song by It's a Me Mitchell. I like that name. It's it's great. It's all one word, by the way. <laughs> sometimes the barista grows up to join a baseball team, and sometimes the barista falls in love with that baseball team, and sometimes she grows up in a city with everything that she needs, but maybe this city's just not for me. I've rode to the top of the Space Needle Light 60 times and smashed Starbucks windows more than that. Did it a few too many people, lost my heart and then some more I gotta go, get gone, gotta get to a getaway And now my ship's leaving the Puget Sound as I cruise on down to Florida now But I hope you are all there to see me off And I know I won't see you every day and that's pretty scary but it's okay We'll see each other soon at the playoffs And 14 smiles and birthday cakes These memories I'll carry with me Chewing gum and bad advice Too many exits I thought were nice Hoping these dark things don't know how to swim Thank you to the band for helping me to find my voice And thank you to the team who taught me strength Touring in that van has shown me the whole world But a tour of stranding treats tend to be only temporary And now my ship's leaving the Puget Sound As I cruise on down to Florida now But I hope you are all there to see me off And I know I won't see you every day And that's pretty scary, but it's okay We'll see each other soon at the playoffs that fly ball know that I would never be here without you and my ship's leaving the Puget Sound as I cruise on down to Florida now but I hope you are all there to see me off and I know you won't see me every day and that's pretty scary but it's okay we'll see each other soon at the playoffs oh we'll see each other soon at the playoffs Oh, I'll see you soon, my friends, and we can laugh and cry again When we see each other make it to the playoffs You're tuning in to 91.9 KCSB FM in Santa Barbara Online at kcsb.org So tell me, tell me, tell me, what am I to do when the band is who I am now, but all I want is you? And show me, show me, show me how to make it right when I have to try and park it now or hit it out of sight. Well, I know who I am now. It's not where I belong. 
melt into your arms I wanna sing this song Oh let me, let me, let me Sing it to the world Let the feedback take me somewhere Somewhere with no hurt And give me, give me, give me Just a little time To learn the role I have to fill And to know that it's mine Well, I know who I am now It's not where I belong I wanna melt into your arms I wanna sing this song sing this song well I know where I am now it's not where I should be I wanna be back at my home I wanna be set free that was Seagull's Song by It's a Me Mitchell and Avila's Cruise by June September are these some of the more uh, recent additions to the garage's collective like perfected automation and Riley before? Um, it's a me Mitchell. I think this is their first submission. I could be wrong. There might've been one before. Um, uh, to be clear, the guard, <laughs> the project is up to like 40 unique songs at this point. Um, so there's a lot of tracks by a lot of people at this point. Uh, but June, June, September has been around since the very first release and has nearly a track on everything. Um, they've been uh, like the, the whole way uh, June's been, been with the project. Heck um, yeah. And that has been, uh, I would say a, a really important part. Um, as much as as much as everyone else is is also important. A uh, special shout outs to June um, for uh, also managing to keep up the incredible pace of of doing a song or multiple songs every week. It's it's tough. Uh, it is tough, uh, but also I think. Um, there's there's a momentum to the to the game in the fact that that each season is just a week um and i think the excitement and the amount of stuff that happens within such a short time really makes everyone bring their a game and also like want to get things out before the next big thing happens yeah um, so yeah i i think Everyone's just like, oh, sweet, I have to write a song about what's happening right now, and I need to get it out within the next five days, otherwise everyone will have forgotten about it, so let's go. Which is going to be rough for this pod, for this radio play, when, uh, if slash when we get it on YouTube, which we usually do for the interviews that people want to have on YouTube, this will be horribly, horribly outdated at that point. Well, it will be like a good introduction to like the first eight weeks of baseball um Fair so point. you'll only have another another few weeks to catch up on um but i'm sure if you uh, take a peek at the garage's discography uh post the recording date of this podcast september 23rd um, 2020 uh yeah um then uh i'm sure you'll be able to catch up on on some of the bigger goings on there's a uh... And if you if you are listening to what we're talking about and want to get become a part of Blazeball, uh, hashtag not sponsored. There is, yeah, I mean you can do it with no information. You can just pick a team with an icon and a name you like and just start betting on the favorites or the underdogs if you want to play risky. And you'll be able to have fun with it. Absolutely. And I, I do recommend voting for the underdogs. 
um, uh, picking a bad team is more fun than picking a good team, in my opinion, which is why I'm still a defender of the Seattle Courage. <laughs> I thought we were a good team, considering we've got to the playoffs a bunch of times. Well, here's the thing. It didn't used to be like that. Um, we are rising up the ranks. We are having a redemption arc, you could say. <laughs> you could you could choose to say, if you wanted. Heck yeah. We are having a third album. Um, yes. <laughs> but also, by the time we win, it'll probably be the ninth or tenth album. <laughs> True. Um, but yeah, we'll make a celebration record, I'm sure, when or if it happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, join. Pick anybody except the Baltimore Crabs. <laughs> um, Who they're the they're the New England Patriots of baseball. Mm-hmm. I, I I've heard people make that reference before, and because I don't know real sports, I only know fictional fake uh, internet sports. Uh, that reference does mean nothing to me, but <laughs> I like that people do make a a link to real sports as well makes me feel like it's somewhat legitimate as a as a sporting interest i guess <laughs> oh yeah i mean it's it's a lot safer than football is that well for us <laughs> yeah it's actually for... not considering the incinerations yeah um but uh but also they're they are they are fictional players uh it doesn't make it not sad whenever people get incinerated uh but a little less sad, I think. <laughs> if this was real life, there'd be a lot more. We wouldn't all be saying the commissioner was doing a great job, that's for sure. I, I think there would be some questions raised, um, to be honest with you. Uh, I think OSHA would probably be getting involved um, or would have gotten involved long before this point. Um, as soon as uh, blood started falling from the sky, I think there would be some questions as to workplace safety. And after uh, after Moe, after the Moe Sunbeams became the Hellmouth Sunbeams, that was also a thing that happened? Um, yeah. And um, I've, I've honestly forgotten who the tacos were before they became the Unlimited Tacos. Um, Baseball's weird, man. Baseball's weird. It's a very strange thing, um, but I love it dearly. Um, and all of the weirdness gives ample opportunities to write fun songs about stuff. Uh, talking of which, uh, we're up to, to album five, I believe. Ooh, with Lang Gang, right? With Lang Gang uh, going into uh, Don't Stay Null. Um, so Lang Gang is just a fun song. I... Uh, this song's been stuck in my head maybe maybe the most uh, out of out of the songs recently um, uh, but yeah Lang Gang by Slothfella uh, A plus and then uh, Don't Stay Null uh, by Zach Dot Rai um, which is um, well maybe we should talk about it after uh, but Don't Stay Null is uh, sort of following up on um, the uh, the plans that I think we were on the edge of finding out whether they worked out or not, whether Jalen was going to come back from the dead or not. Um, so, uh, so that's what Don't Stay Null is about. Um, but yeah, let's hear him. Starting with Lang Gang by Slothfella. I think he's gonna choke When he steps up to the plate 